often said before, when you're dealing with celebrities, you're dealing with a very strange breed, let me tell you. Oh yes, you know, it doesn't matter what you do for them, and I've worked on both sides of the fence, they're never happy. I remember working with a news presenter once, and uh, one weekend they got him on the front cover uh, of this really nice magazine, a glossy magazine, uh, a TV listings thing, you know, inside a newspaper. And I misguidedly went in on the Monday morning and said, oh, you know, lovely piece, glad you got the front cover. It, oh, went absolutely potty. Didn't like the picture, didn't like the fact that he was standing, not sitting. Oh, I mean, you know, and you're kind of thinking, hang on a minute, you've just been on the front page of a newspaper that's selling over a million every Saturday. What's the problem? Yeah, never happy, do you see what I mean? It's a little bit like Megan's chum, seemingly, because obviously since, uh, shall we say, their initial stardust has rubbed off, they've been desperate to climb back into the limelight. We told you a while back, didn't we, how Patrick J. Adams, Megan's cheerleader, denouncing the British monarchy. Well, basically, you know, he got shot down in flames by daring to share some private pictures of himself and Megan on set. He's got the wrath now. He won't be doing that again. You get the picture. But what's fascinating is this, you see. A while back, there was a, an interview with someone on a podcast. It always is now, isn't there? Everything's lifted from podcast. That's literally the journalism of the day by these alleged journalists. And basically, this particular co-star, this one, yeah, remember him? Wouldn't really remember him much, would you? Yes. Well, of course, he was part of the Suits Ensemble and, uh, you know, really trying to get his name out there again, etc. He was lucky enough to be invited over here uh, to the spectacle. Oh, sorry. Yes, the royal wedding way back in May 2018. And, uh, you know, apparently, you know, there were lots of problems. Yeah, lots of waiting around. And, oh, you know, people obviously clearly didn't know who he was. Perhaps he should have ridden uh, alongside Her Majesty the Queen to save the walk down the long aisle, as it were. Who knows? But what was fascinating was he then went on to reveal about why he was pulling strange faces inside, um, you know, the St. George's Chapel. And this really got headlines around the world. Now, you see, the problem that you have when you have somebody who's clearly an attention seeker, a narcissist, that sort of stuff is, you can always speak to the people in and around the area of him on that particular period. So I did. Now, no one else can really re recall anything of a foul smell. You know, people were sort of saying there was a story going beforehand that Megan wanted the church sprayed with various fragrances. You know, and again, I'm not opposed to that. I can understand that. Yes, certainly old churches do have a musty smell. That's because a lot of the time they're left unused and then when they're opened up, the wood, uh, you know, contracts and stuff like that. That's the real reason. But one might suggest, of course, that this particular individual was simply desperate for some PR, desperate to get himself back in the media after Patrick J. Adams had shared those rather private pictures. So you understand how this sort of stuff works now, don't you? It really did result in him getting talked about. And of course, we all now know that the uh, Suits reboot is coming to NBC Universal at some point. But he doesn't want to be left on the shelf. Was never a pivotal part of the show, but making sure this time, at least, that someone will remember him for all the wrong reasons. Apparently, according to a very well-placed source, quite close to him, in that particular chapel, they felt the only foul smell was his lack of manners and courtesy at being invited to such a splendid event. As ever, over to you, Neil Sean in the very heart of London.